Hey guys, Ramsey here. Welcome to another video. Thanks so much for watching. Today, uh, we're going to talk about a This Year in Perfume episode. And we're coming down to the end, which is very exciting and sad at the same time for me because I have really enjoyed doing these. Uh, and this is 2021, so we only have 2022 left to do. Maybe I'll wait uh, until the last day of the year. Maybe that'll be like, uh, you know, New Year's treat. We'll do 2022. Uh, it will kind of encompass everything in my collection from that year. And, you know, as the uh, episodes, if you want to call them that, have gone on, you'll notice that the full bottles keep getting smaller and smaller and smaller. There were some this year in perfumes where I didn't even have room on my table. I was having, you know, bottles on the floor around me so I could reach down and grab them. And now what you're going to notice is a ton of samples. Some of these I've talked about on the channel. Some of these I will be talking about on the channel very soon. And only a handful of full bottles. And a couple of these full bottles I actually bought recently after testing them. Uh, so I kind of just kind of cherry picked the ones that I really liked and left the rest of uh, 2021 alone. Because you know what? We're starting to see this is the time in... Uh, the the decline of the fragrance world, the terminal decline of the fragrance world, where, you know, the old guy in Mr. Lebowski looks at his friend and says, nothing is fucked, the plane has crashed into the mountain. Uh, that's how I feel about the fragrance world right now. You know, I'm starting to see, even looking through some of the fragrances from 2021, you know, you start to see the Navitus parfums, you start to see the uh, there was a fragrance called Hachi Ventus, which I almost broke my computer screen. The name just makes me angry, doesn't it? Doesn't it make you angry? Hachi Ventus? Oh, God. Um, so, yeah, it's turning into that, you know, and I don't want anything to do with that. Give me an 80s fragrance and leave me the hell alone. You know what I mean? In fact, speaking of give me an 80s in fragrance and leave me the hell alone, I did go to work today. Uh, no, I'm not a priest, although I am dressed like one. And... Um, I wore this to work today, and it was absolutely gorgeous. It's still gorgeous. It is projecting. Oh, man, this stuff is heavenly, and it is called Chanel's Coco. Now, this is the Eau de Toilette. I hear the Eau de Parfum is equally nice, if not even nicer, although I've never smelled it. Um, and to make matters even better, this is a vintage splash bottle. Sorry about all the fingerprints and stuff. I think I got this from... Mudasir. I can't remember, but you can kind of see the back has the shortened ingredient list. Uh, I don't know when this bottle's from. Maybe the 90s. Excuse me. Maybe the 90s, but God, it was beautiful at work today. And this is going to make my connection series. So if you've been kind of following along on the different series I've been coming up with, one of them was perfume connections, connections that remind me with, e you know, kind of with each other. And this falls squarely into uh, some of the 80s feminine fragrances that I have talked about on the channel before, but whenever I do the Connection series, I think it'll make more sense because I'm going to talk about a couple of these that kind of remind me of Coco, uh, Eau de Toilette. I was talking with it about Rich Mitch today, uh, and, you know, I, I like that Connection series. I think it's a cool way to talk about fragrances. You know, not every fragrance will remind you of other fragrances, obviously, and I don't like to be the guy that says, this smells like this and this smells like that, but it is a good way to kind of explore perfume and learn about different perfume and categorize perfume. Okay, anyways, uh, let's get into this. So there's going to be a ton of samples, and I want to start with a new house that I'm really taken with this house, and normally when a fragrance house has a ton of new stuff at once, I'm like, oh no, this is not going to be, a, this is not going to end well. However, this particular house comes in these little baggies like this. This is the big baggie, and this is the little mini baggie the sample sets come in. Uh, two people sent me them. They were uh, very kind, my perfume god people out there. But I did a review of one of the fragrances already. You can go check it out. There's a playlist already for this house. Uh, and the house is called Pine Ward. And it's run by a young kid. So this particular one we're going to start with is called Treacle. And everything I've smelled from this house is quality. Everything I've smelled from this house is somewhat daring. And everything I've smelled from this house has that slumber house, indie, Henley, you know, uh, if you like those kind of brands, slumber house, Henley, um, Hans Henley, 
you know, those kind of uh, brands, even something like Russian Adam, Arige La Dore, or Suga, TSVGA, um, James Berry's brand. If you like those kind of fragrance brands, you have to check out Pine Ward. This kid is doing some special stuff. And so I'm going to do uh, videos on each one of these. And let me tell you something. It is much harder to pull out these little tiny samples that I've got thrown everywhere to talk about on this video than the full bottle. So this took me forever to organize, but I'm making it up because I missed yesterday. I've just been, work has been absolutely brutal. I do apologize. Um, but so Trachel is spicy and sweet with tobacco, lapsong, shukong, tea, absolute, molasses, raisins, and honey. So tea, tobacco, honey, molasses, my kind of scent instantly. And it does have that vibe to it. Every single one of these is interesting. I have not come across one that is boring yet. So um, I'm going to be talking a lot about this brand very soon. And even if I never purchased another perfume in my life or never got another sample, you know, sent to me, I would have years worth of content just from all the stuff that you guys have sent me. So thank you. But this house, I'm telling you, it's one to look into. Uh, so then these are all 2021 releases, by the way. Then he put out autumnal and autumnal oh god even from the atomizer i mean spicy and green and it's this crazy mixture of this cinnamony warmth with um peppermint and or mint peppermint or minty um there's a uh mate tea note with beeswax brawn uh, deer tongue, which I'm not familiar with what deer tongue is. Um, not, it's not literal deer tongue, although that would be a hell of a fragrance note. Make a fragrance that smells like deer tongue. Go. Uh, no, but, uh, I think it's some sort of, uh, plant. Chamomile, balsam fir needles with, uh, wheat and oak wood. And it does have this weedy vibe. This is not going to, this, this house is not going to be for everyone. It's definitely not going to be for someone that wears, you know, fragrance one or something like that. This is for the people like us who love fragrance, the people who want to be challenged, who want to smell something unique. And that's why I'm so into this brand right now. Um, okay. So the other one, uh, there's a bunch of them from 2021 actually, but next on the list we'll say is Bindable and Bindable is, uh, green resinous it's got this piney woody uh leafy type smell with ambrette and poplar buds and the ambrette is beautiful uh so this is again this is a house to definitely put on the radar next in 2021 and it's a newer house the kid's only like 28 years old or 29 years old he's young he's in his 20s still uh and he um so you know, it's a newer house, so he's putting out a lot of stuff, but it's funny because, you know, when I smell these, I, it doesn't smell like he's just putting out a bunch of junk. It smells like he's putting out a bunch of quality stuff. So, um, yeah, very interesting. The next one is uh, Brook Lane, and Brook Lane is spicy and resinous and green there's hemlock fir needles with larch cones and it really does smell like you're smelling like you know those big larch cones that you see fall on the ground from the trees um and and if you think about the texture of that that's almost how this fragrance feels now many of these i sprayed once before bed you know just to get a feel of what it's like i'm not ready to give a full wear to them all yet but very soon i will be wearing these perfect for the autumn and winter seasons. Uh, Sandorak, sandalwood, and Vietnamese oud. So he is using oud. Very interesting stuff. Uh, and then we've got a fragrance called Cotswold, which again, all of these are 2021 releases, but uh, I'll probably say it a million times still. So Cotswold is woody and smoky with cedar, smoke, oak wood, ponderosa, pine needles, and vanilla. So the kid's name is Nicholas Nilsson, by the way. And I mean, if you're into these indie brands, man, this is very, very interesting stuff. It's all about his take on the outdoors and the Rocky Mountains and his time in the forest and stuff like that. So they all kind of 
you can kind of see the theme. So next is called Velveteen. And Velveteen is sweet and spicy. Uh, it's got a vanilla, ambergris, cypress, clove, labdanum, and fur. I love, love labdanum and perfumes. So, I mean, these are all just right up my alley. Um, next is Chandlery. And Chandlery is um, spicy and sweet with jasmine, sandalwood, lavender, beeswax, champaca flower, aniseed, aniseed, vetiver, tuberose, deer tongue again. I got to figure out what that deer tongue is. Uh, vanilla, cinnamon, and carnation. Um, and then there is one called Eldritch. Eldritch. So Eldritch is uh, myrrh, leather, patchouli, fur, oolong tea, apopanax, smoke, pine needle, and oak moss. I think I really like this one. They all kind of blend together, uh, but I think that was one that I really did like. And then we've got uh, Revelries. And Revelries is spicy, sweet, with rum, clove, cinnamon, oud, hazelnut, raisins, and apple. I mean, interesting, very interesting note listing. You have to take your hat off to the kid. I mean, even if these aren't to your liking, uh, as a fume head, there's a reason I wanted to do these first, and that's because I'm going to drop them all. And I wanted to do them and knock them out here and then put them back in the little pouch. Two more. Oxylus. Cool name. The next one is not a cool name. The next one is my least favorite name of all. Um, but Oxylus is pine needles with juniper, vetiver, myrtle, a soil note, which I just got Figment Man in full bottle. If you watched my unboxing, it's right there. I wore it to bed. Absolutely astounded by it. I cannot believe I did not like that fragrance. And it just goes to show how tastes change. So do not sell your fragrances if it's too challenging for you. Please set it aside and wait. I am, I'm ready to punch myself in the face. I didn't buy that earlier uh, because I tried it when it first came out in 2017. Official brand sample. And I, I even remember where I was. It left this set memory in my brain. Uh, and I was like, nope, no way. Not for me. Too earthy, too soily, too challenging, too animalic. And I passed on. It was the only amouage I passed on um, for the main line. I still don't have a lot of the Opus lines. Uh, but they're more expensive. But um, then, yeah, revisiting it. And I think FragranceBuy.ca has 100 mil older style bottles with the figment on the side and the name written around the collar for like 120 bucks absolute steal value for money maybe one of the best value for money finds i've i've purchased all year um so oxalis has an, an aquatic note as well with that soil which is interesting again the kid takes chances uh, and then this one is probably the worst name but a good fragrance i remember really liking this one uh it's called icefall and icefall is blue cypress a very underutilized note in perfumery. Blue and Nucta Cypress with kelp, grapefruit, cedar, juniper berry, Aleppo pine, and sandalwood. Man, okay, I'm gonna put all these back, but uh, I just wanted to show these to you. They're all 2021. I think all of his releases are 2020 or 2019 to, to current. Um, so I'm gonna put all these back. And you will hear more about the House of Pine Ward. And again, these are all sent to me by Perfume God people in the in the fragrance community, not the brand. So thank you to you who have sent those to me. That'll give me a ton of content to talk about because it's good stuff. I might even buy some bottles. Speaking about bad stuff, um, that was the good. This is the bad. Maybe the ugly will be later. But uh, I did a live stream a week ago, last weekend actually. And um, the topic of the live stream was, oh God, this is so shit, so shite. Um, the topic of the live stream was blind sniffing fragrances. And actually that's my favorite way to test fragrances. And if you haven't watched the live stream, go watch it. I think it was a good one. It was only like an hour and 45 minutes. And um, 
Uh, I, um, so what happened was one of my perfume god people sent me eight samples with a perfume key. So here's the samples. And here's the perfume key. And I don't know still what's on the rest of them because I was using like a piece of paper covering. It's a card with the names on it. And um, I was covering it as we go along. So I sprayed number three. Okay. And if you want one of the most damning, absolute damning, nail in the coffin, could not have put it any better for someone who did not know what brand it was, go watch when I discover Number, when I put number three on the inside of my left elbow, because I was doing it here, here, sniffing here, here, right? And I went to four and then I stopped. So we're going to do a round two of that video, hopefully this weekend. I hope you guys can tune in. It was fun times. I really enjoyed it. And um, so when I sprayed on number three, I went, oh my God, this smells like Latafa. This smells like cheap shit. Like, what is this? And... I did not waver. It is one of the most nail in the coffin and I absolutely nailed it. You guys know what brand it is? It is Maitrier Premier Oud 7. The same brand that did that Falcon leather that is disgusting. Um, it is bad, okay? Maybe it's just a slight touch above a Latafa fragrance, but not much, honestly. I mean, I've smelled Latafa fragrances that are just as good as this, or just as bad as this, you could say. It is not worth hundreds of dollars. Uh, and, and reading the notes is hilarious. They're like Bangladeshi and Oud, Egyptian Violet Leaf Absolute, Balkans Tobacco Absolute, bullshit. Uh, um... Well, maybe that, maybe those are true notes, but what it all blends to, to my nose, is um, Latafa, $20 frag. And I absolutely nailed it. Blind, destroyed Maitreya Premier Oud 7. Let me put you away, too, while we're in the mood of putting stuff away so I don't lose stuff. Because I want to do the second half of this. Um, I want to do the second half of this blind sniffing. You know, I love sniffing fragrances blind. It's one of my favorite ways to test fragrances because you just... Put all of the bullshit aside, all of the marketing, all of the brand copy, all of the notes, you know, all of the expectation. You just um, completely set it aside and uh, just smell with your nose. Close your eyes, smell with your nose, just your nose. You don't smell with your eye. You don't smell with your eyes or what you see. You don't smell with the label on the bottle, you know, the brand, your expectations, just completely blind. Now. Um, you know, it's hard to do that unless someone sends you stuff, because if a brand sends you stuff, you're going to, if you buy something from the brand, you know what you're buying, that kind of stuff. But I really think that is a great video to go watch. And I did discover a couple that I really liked. The first two were good. The last two were, eh, and we'll do the other four this weekend. I think that was a fun video. Okay, so I found this recently while kind of scourging through my samples and I thought, shit, this will be a great video to do because uh, I don't own any of these uh, extra versions of the Amouage. So, M so when Rene Salman, the fish man, took over, he uh, started to do these interlude 55 or whatever the hell it is uh, to show you how little I care. I don't own a single one. Uh, and of course, doubled or tripled the price when he when he did it in extra and fifty six percent you know perfume concentration. You don't need that interlude lasts twelve hours on me anyways. What do I what do I need an uh, interlude that lasts eighty hours? You know, and to give you triple the money for something that you're piggybacking off of Christopher Chong's work. I'm in a mood today. I, I apologize, um, but yeah, I mean that 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 pissed me off and uh, that was. When Amouage really, I think, started to go down the tubes. However, I did discover an Amouage we'll talk about at the end of the video that came out in 2021. I really like. But this is one that was sent to me by Mudasir whenever uh, I purchased something from him. Thank you, Mudasir. Uh, and this is called Amouage Epic 56 Extra. Okay. So, first of all, let me say something. Uh, about Amouage Epic for Women, because this is the one that they did the Amouage 56 on, not the men's version. It was the women's version, okay? And this is one of the best buys I've made in years. This was... My God. 
So Euro Rose, amongst many other people, kind of pounded the table and were like, hey, if you like amouages, you have to try Epic Woman. Because I have Epic Man, I love it. And I do, I had a couple of the women's, but I didn't have very many at the time. Uh, and I blind bought this based on, I got this from Mudasir too. And uh, it's an older bottle back when it says Oman Perfumery LLC. If you look at the newer amouage, you'll notice it says something like um, uh, amouage S-A-O-C. So the older ones just say Oman Perfumery and the really old ones say Sultanate of Oman. Anyways, enough about the lineage of amouage. Um, but I got this and I was stunned. Absolutely beautiful, amazing cumin with lovely rose tea. You know, the tea in this actually reminds me a little bit of the tea in Creed Silver Mountain Water. Imagine if you just took that tea note out. Nothing else of the fragrance smells like it except for the tea note. And uh, then you put an amouage base on it with oud, frankincense, and a beautiful iris. That iris and sandalwood and musk and guyac wood and an amazing base, but that frankincense, oh man, it is so good. So good. I'm so glad I got the 100 mil bottle. So I love this stuff. So I am going to do a comparison video for you guys one day. I'm going to wear this on one hand, the Amouage Extra 56, and I'm going to wear the just regular Eau de Parfum on the other, and we're going to have a good old fashioned comparison video. So I'm excited about that. I actually forgot. That's what happens when you have a, you know, just a thousand samples thrown is um, you kind of forget to get to stuff. But I'm glad I found this because I need to do this video. I'm sure you guys will like it. So Amouage Epic 56 came out in 2021. And then uh, a Frederick Mall came out in 2021 too. And I actually really like this. Um, and I'll do a video on this one soon as well. Uh, also. Man, I really like the, the way it's so green with the basil and galbanum and oh, it's really good. It's um, Synthetic Jungle. So I don't think I would buy a bottle of Synthetic Jungle, but I like it. Uh, and the fact that I hear the new Frederick Mall is shite, uh, uncut gem. I really want to get my nose on that. I want to see if, uh, if it's as bad as some people say. Uh, and I do trust some of those voices who say that it is bad. So I am expecting nothing but to be disappointed, but I still want to smell it myself. Um, but Synthetic Jungle is apparently Basil, Lily of the Valley, Jasmine, Galbanum, and Patchouli. And so it's a big green floral. Uh, so I'm excited to wear that and talk about it for you guys. And then... One that I actually already did a video on, and I did like it. This could be full bottle worthy, but something about the smoke note, I don't know. It just doesn't, there's just something slightly off about it. I don't know if I would get a full bottle of this, especially when it is, um, especially when it's compared to a Beaufort, uh, Beaufort of London, which I'm looking at buying, which I might do that. I think I'm more into that brand right now. But this is from the house of Naomi Goodsir, and it's called Corpus Equus. And to be fair, it is done by the great Bertrand du Chaffaut, the magician. Uh, and there is incense in here. There's frankincense. Uh, it's a smoky, birchy leather. And I liked it. Go watch my early impression video if you haven't seen it. I liked it. I don't know if I like loved it enough to buy a full bottle. And then let's do a couple of Rige Le Dore's because one of the best things once we get into 20, 2019, 2018 to current, let's say, are these brands like Arige Le Dore, Ortnikoff, Arige Le Dore. I mean, they really uh, have brought the love of perfumery back, I think. Some of the things they're doing are absolutely stunning and... Um, I, I have been blessed just to be able to even try all of the ones that I tried because Russian Adam sent these to me out of the kindness of his heart. But one of them that I really liked, and I would love a bottle of this, there's actually a couple, um, I would say, Arige Ladore perfumes that are on the uh, are on, on the top of the list that I really want to buy. Uh, and this is one of them. And this is called Oudzen. 
And there was a older Oud Zen, Oud Z-E-N, not Z-H-E-N. I think that came out maybe two or three years ago uh, before this one was released. But Oud Zen is just the prototypical perfect Oud. It's Oud, Indian Oud, Indian Saffron with Castorium, Civet, Vetiver, Myrrh, Sandalwood, and Tolu Balsam. Perfect Oud fragrance. Um, I would love a bottle of this, but it's so hard to find, and you really have to be prepared to pay big bucks when you do find it. Uh, and then, in 2021, this came out, and this is the other Ariz Ladori that I really want a full bottle of. Well, I want a couple of them still. I really want Antiquity, I really want um, Oud Zen, and I really want this one, and it's Chinese Oud. Chinese Oud is stunning. It uses a real wild uh, Chinese Oud. Uh, and apparently they are very rare. It's a very rare Oud oil from like 20 years ago, if I remember. It's woody. It's smoky. It's a beautiful, stunning uh, Oud development. And I think when I first wore this and tried it, I just think I wasn't at that point in my Oud journey, if you will, my appreciation of Oud, my understanding of Oud, to understand how special this was. Because I revisited this. As you can see, there's nothing left almost. Um, I haven't revisited this one yet, which I will very soon. But I revisited this one night, and I was blown away. I mean, I was like in heaven, like, wow, what in the world am I smelling? It is so good. And I think there's real Mysore sandalwood. <sighs> Amazing. Amazing stuff. Um, and then the Russian Atom creation uh, that was a co collab, a collaboration with his um, stepbrother, I think it is, Anton. And he created a brand called Aton Perfumes. Uh, and I have did a video on one of his creations, but this was a collab with uh, the two of them. And this one's called Manly. And this is probably one of my least favorite of the line of fragrances that Russian Adam sent me to try. Uh, Manly is woody and leathery. It does have a little bit of a synthetic. There's this big cashmeran dose in the heart. Um, but it grew on me from the first time I sp smelled it to the time that I tried it again for a second time. Um, I liked it even more. I liked it more uh, than the first time. And when I try it again, I bet you I might like it even more again. So, again, not one I probably would, would try to hunt a full bottle of, but uh, I've come to appreciate Manly. I don't hate it. Uh, I would wear it, let's say. If, some, if I had it in my collection, I would wear it. I just don't know if I'd pay for it right now. Because there's so many other Ariz Ladori creations that I want so bad. Uh, okay, let me, speaking of putting things away, let me put some of these back so I don't lose them. Okay, go back to your home. There we go. Uh, okay, so next on the list. Next on the list, we have a Papillon. Speaking of amazing bang for your buck, uh, Papillon is, I think, one of the best bang for your buck niche houses out there. And this is called Spell 125. So this came out in 2021, obviously, or it wouldn't be on the video. Uh, and Spell 125 is this green resinous scent, and I actually did an interview with Liz Moores. If you go to my playlist and uh, find the one that says Interviews, you'll be able to find my interview with Liz Moores. And she said something very interesting. She said, Spell 125 is by far um, the most ambergris I've ever used in a perfume and this is real white ambergris is what she is what she says um and so I I like this I have worn it to bed once I haven't given it a full wear yet but I will give it a full wear and talk about it on the video so that is uh spell one two five and you can see the note listing right there I love her work I think she's stunning and a stunning interview too she was amazing to have on I'd love to have her back on one day I sent her um a list or I sent her a um, maybe like 10 decants of vintage fra vintage masculines she liked the animalic fragrances so I sent her Antaeus and Koros and you know all that good stuff um, 
Lapidus Pour Homme and Hugo Boss number one and you know those kind of perfumes I'd love to have her on and and get her take if she still has a couple drops left that was months and months ago but uh, it was a pleasure having her on. And then a house that I haven't done a video on yet, but I will very soon, is the house of Hiram Green. And this is called Vetiver. So they put their Vetiver out in 2021, obviously. And um, the only thing I don't like about the Hiram Green samples is it's one mil. And I know one mil is common. I know. I like one and a half. I even saw some 1.7 mil samples. That's just a little more you can play with. Uh, one mil is fine, but I, I want more. Uh, I, I want my samples to be a little bigger, but I get it. It is what it is. You know, the juice is, is expensive. Sample sets can get expensive if you do more. Um, but Vetiver is apparently a green and woody fragrance. Go figure. Citrus, ginger, Haitian vetiver and Java vetiver, so two types of vetiver in the heart with cedar wood and ambrette seeds. So very looking forward to uh, trying that and talking about it on the channel. And then we've got a diptyque that I actually did a, in, uh, a review on already. You can go check it out. Again, I think Dip diptyque has its own playlist. You can just click on diptyque and find this. And this one's called Aurelia. And this was actually sent to me by one of you guys who claimed they loved it so much. They went back, bought a bottle, and kind of made it their signature scent. And I and I completely see can see why. Uh, if you like something like Tuscan leather or ombre leather, I think you would like this. Imagine that diptyque DNA. You know, diptyque has a style to me. Diptyque smell like a diptyque. Uh, um, I really don't know how else to, to describe it. It almost has this candle-like smell to it. And maybe it's because their candles are so popular. But there is this candle-like smell to many diptyques. And I do like the brand of diptyque. They're not my favorite, but I do like them. Uh, and this is raspberry. So think Tuscan leather. Raspberry, leather, saffron. The big three, right? And then they've added a couple things. You get iris which I think is the note that maybe really tries to distinguish this from Tuscan leather. You get iris, you get musk, cedarwood, and vanilla. And it, think about maybe like a easier to wear Tuscan leather or ombre leather. You know, I prefer the more challenging wares, obviously. I prefer Tuscan leather because it is more challenging uh, and it's bolder and all that good stuff. But if you wanted to wear like something like this to the office, Aurelia would fit that. I just, I wouldn't give Diptyque hundreds of dollars for that scent. Okay, next we're going to talk about my friend Peter Carter's scent, who sent me this sample set. Thank you, Peter. It's very kind of you. I love your aesthetic of the brand. I love all of the uh, backstories on these, and I love the names. So I'm very excited about this one. I have a feeling this could be my favorite uh Centauri scent, but I haven't given it a try yet. Uh, this is called Om. So, Om uh, is smoky and green with Thai oud, and he did use real Thai oud with frankincense, uh, spikenard, patchouli, smoke, pink pepper, ginger, juniper berry, civet, peru balsam, lavender absolute, deer musk, and Irish white ambergris. So there's real Thai oud, and there's real Irish white ambergris. Expensive notes. Uh, and so I'm very excited to try Ulm. I've done a couple videos on Centauri perfumes already. I did one on Mirabai. I don't know if he has any more of that left, but that uses a very rare 1960s Indian sandalwood. And I did a video on An Anthea recently, and I really liked Anthea. I think Anthea may have been my favorite of the two that I've done videos on so far. Uh, but this is more of like a fruity floral scent, and I think it would work great in the higher heat. Uh, it's turning to cooler weather now. It's in November. But, you know, uh, this would be great, I think, for spring or summer. Uh, very wearable, but also it had some legs, you know. Uh, it was fruits like raspberry and apricot, citruses like red mandarin orange and yuzu, Bulgarian Rose and Violet, and then Bourbon Vanilla Absolute, Musk, Peru Balsam, Benzoin, Vetiver, Indian Sandalwood, and then White Ambergris. Again, I think many of his scents use real ambergris, 
and um, he did a video on ambergris, which is pretty funny. I guess some of the crazy climate activist people like attacked him for using ambergris, and he's like, you morons don't know how ambergris works, do you? you we're not killing the whale to get ambergris. Ambergris doesn't harm the whale. In fact, there's only two animal products that can be used in perfume, just like if for in, involve perfume. One is ambergris, the other is hyrax, because the animal is not harmed at all. Hyrax is African stone, it's literally, and I did an entire video on hyrax, you can go check it out. And ambergris comes out of the whale, the whale poops it out, most people think. Uh, and it kind of floats in the sea and then lands on land and that's where it's found. So the animals aren't harmed at all in, in using those type of, uh, it's not like civet where they keep the, you know, civet cats in the cage and beat the cage to make them mad or kill them to get it out. You know, it's, it's completely different with ambergris, but Peter did a very interesting video on it. You should check out. Okay. So next on the list, we have another brand that I have not talked about on the channel yet, uh, although they've shown up in a couple lists, uh, but I haven't done p uh, proper reviews on them yet. Uh, and this is the house of Mar Olfactif, okay? And this was sent to me by one of my perfume god people. So again, I have a lot of content to put out. Uh, this is called Sun Soaked, which came out in 2021. And Sun Soaked is um, fruity, spicy. It made my Narcissus video because there is daffodil, there's Narcissus, Neroli, bitter orange, black currant bud, chamomile, Texas cedar, and amber. It smells amazing from the atomizer, I'll tell you that. It smells absolutely amazing. So, uh, Sun Soaked 2021 release. So, this is a brand you'll be hearing more about as well. And. Then, a brand that you have seen one video on, and it wasn't good. It was bad. Uh, actually, it was really bad. It was one of the worst things I've smelled all year, and I actually wore it as my scent to the day, and I was pissed off all day. Uh, it's from the house of Astrophil and Stella, and this is called Patty Shetty. Now, you know, cheek little name, Patty Shetty, uh, sweet, creamy, very bad fragrance. I did not like this. Uh, it was just, go go watch my review on it, but uh, it was way too sweet for me, way too synthetic. You know, if you're someone who likes something like Zerjoff Symphonium, maybe Petty Shetty is for you, but for me, um, both of those fragrances are shite, by the way. And, and this was a bad start to a brand. I've talked about how the first fragrance that you wear from a brand you know, really imprints in your mind. Do you want to continue with that brand or do you want to, you know, move on? Now, these were, I already have other samples as you'll see, so there will be more videos from this brand. But uh, if I did not and that was the only time I encountered this brand, I would move on. I would honestly just move on. I wouldn't even bother. Um, and what's interesting is that Petty Shetty is made by Natalie Feisthauer. I thought she was a good perfumer, but... That was just a dud for me. Uh, so another one from the brand from 2021 is called Nab Nabati. And Nabati was created by Christian Provenzano. So this one I'm, I'm kind of looking forward to. It sounds like it's more my speed. It's spicy, leathery, cardamom, saffron, divana, rum, ambret, sea salt. This smells good from the atomizer. Moroccan rose, marine notes, iris, patchouli, Cedarwood, vetiver, musk, labdanum, leather, oud, amber, and vanilla. So, sounds like my kind of note listing. Um, anytime I see spicy and leathery, I'm usually all over it. It's just a matter of are the levels of the qualities of the ingredients going to be higher than what I got here? Because Petty Shetty did not seem high quality to me. It seemed cheap, actually. So, I'm hoping that's just a dud, a one-off. Uh, there's also a fragrance that was created by Luca Mafai, and it's called A Night at the Opera. And this one doesn't look too bad either. It's uh, spicy and woody with artemisia, bergamot, sweet vernal grass, labdanum, leather, tobacco. This one actually has a cap. Look. 
I wonder if this is like a newer uh, decant. The other ones don't have caps. Amber, cashmeran, guyac wood, musk, patchouli, and Virginia cedar. I think I got some of that Chinese oud on my nose. I can still smell it. That is insane. Um, a tiny molecule from the atomizer must have got on my nose from Chinese oud way back when. I can still smell it. Um, but cocoa is beautiful. I'll tell you what. Um, again, if you're a guy, do not overlook cocoa. It is stunning. Just because it was marketed for women, amazing fragrance for anybody. Uh, okay, so let's get to the bigger bottles. Or I got a couple more decants and we'll get to the big bottles. And you'll see how few there are. Uh, I'm looking at them just right here and there's only a handful. So, um, first of all, let's talk about an MDCI fragrance, which by the way, I wore Schiffer Palatine to bed last night. Oh my God, what a gorgeous, stunning, shockingly beautiful perfume that is. Uh, I would love a full bottle one day, but uh, I'm happy with my decant right now because I still have about 25 mils left and that's a lot of juice for me. But, um... They created a new fragrance called Le Elegant in 2021. And these little decants come from a, from a guy called um, Mitsu Kelsey, I believe his name is, on eBay. I did a video on him before, but if you want to, to me to pass along his information to you, uh, I'll be glad to. Just send me an email. My email's in, the, in all the videos, and I'll send you the channel, the, the name of his eBay channel. He, uh, I've used him probably four or five times. I've made buys off of him. Every time it's perfect. Every time everything is correct. Uh, and, and, you know, somebody I, I've come to trust. And it's hard to find people nowadays. So when you find someone, you really kind of got to grab on. Plus, he has these decants. And when you have a big collection, you don't always need a 100 mil bottle. I mean, you have to pay $335 for a 100 mil bottle of La Elegant when 10 mils is more than enough. I mean, I've had this for a, 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 easily a year, maybe a year and a half already. And look, the tiniest little dent. And the atomizers on these are very good. You know it's a good atomizer when you spray and the juice level doesn't go down very much. Uh, this, this is a very good atomizer on these little deep, these 10 ml. Um, decanters that he uses. So, the Elegant. And this is one, you know, this is a great example of why I um, am kind of upset at the niche world because this is a fragrance that you would expect in the mainstream. This is something that you would expect to smell, you know, from something that was worn by everybody. Dior or Guerlain or something not niche. You know, niche used to be they would take chances. And this is a very wearable, easy, it's, it was created by a perfumer named Irene uh, Farmashidi. And, Farm and Irene Farmashidi created this um, woody, spicy, very likable. This is a very likable, easy to wear for me fragrance. Um, some people compare it to Nobile 1942, one dot dot one. Um, I've never smelled anything from no, Nobile 1942 or Nobile 1942, but, uh, you know, for me, this is just a very likable, easy to wear. It is somewhat synthetic. And, you know, when you spend this much money, MDCIs are not cheap. When you spend this much money, maybe you would expect something more, you know, in the class of Chifra Palatine, which I know it's asking a lot. That's one of the greatest fragrances ever created, in my opinion. Um, but other than that, I mean, this is a very nice fragrance. No one talks about it, and I don't blame them. I mean, these houses release 10, 20 offerings a year sometimes. You can't keep up. It's impossible. But I think Zhao talked about this. And so I'll give you a pass for that Falcon Leather Zhao, because... I trust I uh, trusted your nose on this one, and it worked out well. I enjoy this one. It's got this um, peppery, saffrony, cardamom, spicy thing going on with frankincense and iris and honey and cumin, cinnamon, and nutmeg. So lots of spices, uh, some wood, some warmth, and a base of uh, labdanum, resins, oud, cashmere, tonka, musk. It's a nice fragrance. It is. It's very wearable.
Um, and it is sort of elegant in more of a mainstream way though. It doesn't seem very niche to me. Uh, but I'll do a full review on that one day soon. And then uh, a uh, perfume I already have a review on. You can check it out. And again, look, I've had this for over a year. Uh, and look at the dent. I mean, you don't always need 100 mil bottles. Uh, this is called Ombre Supreme by Les Demodables. Now, so this is the good side of 2021. Houses like Les Demodables are out there. You know, Bortnikov coming up, Andy Tower, Ariz Lodore. There's some good, but man, there's also some shite out there. Um, but the brand Les Demodables, if you've never dipped into them, I don't think you can go wrong with anything they do. I don't think they make a bad fragrance. Uh, but this is one of my favorite ambergris scents. By the way, there were two samples, or at least one, I could not find. I know I did a video on from 2021. Uh, maybe I chunked the sample because it was gone. I didn't think I did, but I just couldn't find it. Um, and it was Ariz Lodore Atlantic Ambergris 2. That came out in 2021. So if you click on my uh, Ariz Lodore playlist, you'll be able to easily find Atlantic Ambergris 2. reason that popped in my head is Ombre Supreme is all about ambergris and my two favorite ambergris scents are Ombre Supreme and Atlantic Ambergris. Uh, I've only smelled the two but I'm sure one is very similar. I know Russian Adam kind of keeps the same playbook from one to two if, if he can uh, but this is this aldehydic um, peppery ambergris fragrance and it is stunning. I mean it's like a bright sunny day um, you know, it's like the sun reflecting off the ocean as it's shimmering along, and it's just beautiful. I mean, uh, beautiful, very introspective. There's a note of Immortel in the base, but I don't really get very much Immortel, uh, almost no Immortel at all. So if you're, you know, if you're uh, one of the people who fear Immortel, if you don't like the the curry plant, don't worry. Uh, if it's there, it's almost negligible. It's all about the ambergris, and it is a stunning take on it. And they say they use a lot. You can go look up their marketing. I forget what they say, but they do say they use a lot of real ambergris in here. Um, it's beautiful. It is amazing. Um, completely unisex. Just so gorgeous. Anyone can wear that. Okay, so let's do the full bottles. And again, there's not very many of them. So, and again, this is not ranked. I can't imagine ranking this. I would lose my mind. Um, but this would be close to the top if I did rank these because I love this stuff. And this is a Bortnikoff. It was in the thumbnail. And this is called Lao Oud. Okay, so Lao Oud. And here's the little note breakdown, but it's basically a mixture, a blend to me, of Oud Maximus, which is one of my favorite just out and out ouds. And look at the, look at the look at the uh, look at that. I don't know if that's bad straining or what. I don't know what that is, but uh, either way, the scent itself is gorgeous. And if you like Oud Maximus, if you like resinous animalic barnyard ouds. There is some of that. There's some Laotian oud in here. It's animalic. Um, there's Laotian and Indian oud in here. Uh, but there's also some beautiful notes. There's beeswax absolute. There's cacao absolute. There is uh, vanilla absolute. Uh, but the star of the show is coffee. And so this is... Imagine if you took oud maximus... Okay, which is the out and out oud, like four types of oud and civet and castorium and all this stuff. And you blended it with oud monarch. And oud monarch is like this chocolatey oud. Whereas oud monarch is very heavy chocolate. This uses coffee instead. I love it. It's one of my favorite coffee uh, scents. I, I still need to try Russian Adams coffee, oud luwak. I've never smelled that one. But um, this is amazing stuff because it still gives you that animalic kick that I crave so much from Oud Maximus, but it softens it a little bit, right? So whereas Oud Monarch uses that chocolate, this uses coffee and it's beautiful. There's also a smoky birch tar in the base. It's a stunning, stunning scent. Um, 
I might wear that soon. It's been a while, but uh, I love Lao Oud. I think it's one of the best uh, newer Bortnikovs that I've smelled. Okay. And then, just a couple months back, I actually was sent a sample of this fragrance by someone, and um, it, you know, worked out exactly how you would expect. I smelled it, I liked it, and I liked it enough to buy a bottle. I actually got offered a bottle from someone in the community at a great price, and I couldn't say no. But this is Andy Towers Sundowner. So this is a 2021 release. This really does feel like Andy Tower kind of getting back to his roots, uh, to doing what he does so well. This is beautiful. I mean, for a tobacco, there's some sweetness, but it's it's um, not overdone. It's something I can handle. You know, sweetness can sometimes be a questionable note on me, but it's uh, bergamot, orange zest, cinnamon, rose absolute, cacao absolute, tobacco absolute, cipriol, patchouli, sandalwood, tonka, ambergris, and vanilla. And that ambergris is definitely that tower odd DNA that Andy came up with. It's so beautiful. Um, and, you know, he has a new fragrance out again. Uh, he's been kind of pumping them out lately. This one's called Golis Golistan, which is, um, I think, based on some sort of uh, flower park in Iran or something. But it's based on rose, Damask Rose and stuff like that. I'd love to smell it, but uh, I don't think I would buy it, uh, mostly because I'm so happy with the, the five Andy Tower that I have full bottles of now. Most of the stuff that I really like is the older stuff, you know, Incense Extreme, Lady Desert Moroccan, um, that kind of stuff. And, um, and then this comes along and I just, I loved it. I absolutely, I just, I fell in love with it. It is very good. Great tobacco scent. Uh, perfect. I mean, look at the color scheme. The color scheme is perfect. This this side, not the dark, not the blue hues, but more the red and yellow hues and sunflower is a perfect feel. It's a great autumn fragrance. And then I guess um, Sundowner is kind of what I was expecting this fragrance to be, and it's not. I was very disappointed with this one, and I've been very harsh on this, and I think this is because this is when the realization that this is not the Amouage that I fell in love with hit me, okay? Uh, and it's this. It's Boundless, which came out in 2021. Nice packaging. I like this packaging. You know, it opens up like this magnetic box. Uh, and there's a little blurb from the perfumer. The bottle looks nice. Everything was perfect until I sprayed it. And I was like, oh, shit. It's Amber Woods. Um, it does have this Bulgari Man in Black. Um... Actually, I think a better version of this fragrance, if you want my opinion, is Plum and Cognac by Sense of Wood, which came out a year before this. I think uh, they kind of uh, copied Plum and Cognac a little bit. Uh, I think Plum and Cognac is actually better. And But there is no plum in this, and there's blood orange and ginger. There's some, different, there's some differences, but you get the idea. It's in that range. And... Probably the best part of this fragrance is the opening because you get this lovely spicy cardamom and I love spices, okay? And the cardamom in here is beautiful. It's perfect. The cardamom, uh, the LME, you know, it opens up and it really does uh, open beautifully for the first five or ten minutes. And then it kind of turns to this vanilla-y slight tobacco, but lots of amber woods. The amber woods really come through. There is frankincense and myrrh and patchouli, and it is a good scent. I will wear this. Not like it's so bad I won't wear it. I will wear it. Uh, I just, I don't know. I expected more. You know what I mean? Um, I expected more. But um, this is when I think I realized, man, this is not my this is not the amouage that I fell in love with, and I can't just go blind buy everything that they put out because it's not for me. I skipped Enclave and Meander, and I was like, okay, I skipped the shitty ones. I'm going to the good one. Uh, nope, didn't work out, but um, that's okay. I'm glad to have it. I'll wear it. And in fact, she even says what's funny is in Perfumer Speak, if you look right there, if you want to read her little blurb, you can pause it and read it. I really like Karine Vinchon Spinner, by the way. She created a fragrance a year or two before this called Overture Man, which is a masterpiece. So when I heard she was the perfumer, I was like, I'm there. And it didn't necessarily work out that way. But uh, she says, 
I wanted to play with the idea of golden wood, amber woods. That's what that's code for, amber woods. Uh, and so, yeah, I mean, the cardamom and the spices in the opening are great, but uh, I just, I wanted more. And finally, the amouage, which, um, you know, actually, I'm going to spray this. I haven't sprayed this yet. I haven't sprayed the bottle yet. Um, I got a sample from um, Mudasir of this fragrance, and it's called Opus 13 Silver Oud. And I think he sent me a sample from his 50 ml bottle. This is the new 100 ml. Uh, and I got this for like 300 and three, 340 maybe, something like that. No tax shipped from Max Aroma because I had a coupon code someone sent me on uh, Instagram out of the blue. Thank you. He said, hey man, I'm watching your video. Max Aroma has like 10 of these and there's a 25% off code and free shipping. And So anyways, um, here's the bottle. Here's the new, and I do like this. I will, I will admit, I do like this. Um, it's a good looking bottle. It's better looking than their other bottles. But let's spray this. I haven't even sprayed this, but Silver Oud, um, I was very taken with, okay? Because Silver Oud, um, okay, so far so good. I think that's what I remember. But uh, I got a sample. Go watch my video of this because I did back-to-back -back early impressions. <laughs> And yeah, so far so good. And um, one of them was the new Royal Tobacco, which everyone is talking about. That's the, you know, 2022 fragrance that Fragcom is all talking about, right? Royal Tobacco. And I got it and I was like, you know, it's not bad. And I, and I said in the video before I had a chance to smell Silver Oud, I said, it's probably the best thing that they put out under... Reno Salman, right? The fish guy. Uh, and, you know, then the very next day I was like, let me try this uh, silver oud. And I was like, holy crap. No, this is the best thing that they put out under the fish guy. Hands down. Uh, it's better than Royal Tobacco. Absolutely, 100%. No questions asked about it. In fact, uh, if you like Royal Tobacco... I would urge you to save yourself some money and instead of spending uh, instead of spending $360 on Royal Tobacco, you can get this at discounters for like a hundred bucks. This is called Iron Duke. Someone sent me this on, speaking of connections, see this is why I should save this information for my connections video, but I'm not very good at, you know, marketing myself or anything like that. Um, but someone sent me this, a picture of this from China. They were like, hey man, I'm in China, you know, and I wanted to say hi and I love your content. By the way, I bought this and this is not challenging to me at all. It's beautiful. And I said, I know. It reminds me of Amouage Opus um, 14 Royal Tobacco. And um, so if you're into that style instead of Royal Tobacco, which the thing about Royal Tobacco is Royal Tobacco has this licorice root note, okay? Licorice root is very distinctive and you're not going to miss it, right? And uh, it also has fenugreek. This doesn't have those. Uh, but the vibe overall will give you the feel of Royal Tobacco because Royal Tobacco is very oily and, you know, lots of resins and stuff like that. Uh, and... Oh, I really like Silver Oud. Uh, beautiful Cipriol. One of the best, honestly, one of the best Cipriols. Uh, and Amouage has like three of my favorite Cipriol fragrances of all time. They have uh, Silver Oud and they've got Journeyman right here. Uh, Journeyman. And then they have Opus... They have Opus um, 6, which is also one of my favorite Cipriol fragrances. So, yes, um, so Silver Oud. Uh, but if you like Royal Tobacco, I would just urge you to try to go buy a bottle of this Beaufort. I'm telling you, it's uh, it'll, it'll be a little bit more distinctive. You'll save a couple hundred bucks and, um, you know... This is a winner for me, 100%. In fact, it's such a winner, I started to blind buy stuff from the house. So I'm going to talk about this one very soon. 
But uh, but yes, that's my 2021 video. Let me know what your favorites are from, from 2021. I'd love to hear your thoughts, your feedback, uh, which ones from my list are your favorite, that kind of thing. Uh, I'm so glad the uh, 100 mil smells the same because if it was reformulated after a year, I'd have been even more pissed off at Amouage. Um, so I'm glad to have 100 mils of that. That's a winner. Uh, okay, let me know what you think. I love seeing your faces in the comments. Please do leave a comment below. Thank you everyone for watching. Cheers, guys. Have a great evening. Bye now.